Hi everyone, Kevin here. And in this video, we'll extend the decentralized app we've built in our previous guide, from zero to DAP in 15 minutes. And we're going to build a microservice that'll make your DAP faster and scalable. What we accomplished in our previous guide was to build the ping pong DAP, which is a simple example of an application that can be built on the Elrond blockchain. We also built and deployed the ping pong smart contract on the blockchain, a simple smart contract that implements two functions, ping and pong, and two view functions, did user ping and get time to pong. The Git repositories of this app and contract are in the video description. So basically, this app will allow the user to deposit a specific number of tokens to the smart contract address and to lock them for a specific amount of time. After this time interval passes, the user can claim back the same amount of tokens. We used 1xe gold and 10 minutes as default values in our previous video. However, these values can be changed when we deploy the smart contract. Sending funds to the contract is called ping and is implemented in the smart contract ping function. Requesting the same amount of XE gold back is called Pong. In our previous guide, each time the user accessed the dashboard page of the app, a request had to be made to the blockchain. This request can take some time or, if there are too many requests happening at the same time, it can return an error or timeout. What we recommend is to minimize the number of queries to the blockchain and this can be accomplished by using a microservice, which is an intermediary layer between the blockchain layer and the app layer. In this guide, we're going to build a microservice, which is basically an API. We're going to use the Nest.js and the sample microservice template provided by the Elrond network. We will cover two basic topics, caching and transaction processing. So what is caching? On the caching side, what we need to achieve is to cache the values that come from the blockchain. In our case, the values returned by the function getTimeToPong, so every future request will get fast results from our microservice. We will also invalidate the cache after the Pong transaction will be done by using the transaction processor. We'll listen to all the Pong transactions on the blockchain that have our smart contract address as the receiver and as soon as one transaction is confirmed we will invalidate the cache related to the sender's wallet address. As I said, we're going to use a microservice template based on Nest.js and the caching will be done using a Redis server so the prerequisites for this guide are Node.js, NPM, and Redis server. We will extend from 0 to DAP in 15 minutes guide so let's build on the existing folder structure and create the microservice into a subfolder of the parent project folder. Let's look at the current folder structure. Before we begin, we'll make sure Redis server is installed and running on our development server. Optionally, we can daemonize Redis server, so we'll run it in the background. We want to make sure Redis is running, so we search it in the list of the running processes. Then we will have to see a log line like this one. Okay, let's get started with the microservice. First, we'll clone the template provided by the Alron team. Let's look at the folder structure. We have the config subfolder. Here we'll set up the ping pong smart contract address. The transaction processors are defined in the source and cron subfolder and source slash endpoints. Here we have the code for the main endpoint of our microservice. Let's first configure the microservice. We'll find a configuration file for every network we want to deploy the microservice on. In our guide, we will use the devnet configuration which will be found in config.devnet yaml file. Here we're going to configure the Redis server URL. If we run a Redis server on the same machine, or on our development machine, then we can leave the default value. We're going to leave it as is for now. Then we'll move on to the smart contract address. We can find it in our DAP repository. If you don't already have the smart contract deployed on DevNet, then we suggest you follow the previous guide first and then go back to this step. Set the contract's ping pong key with the value of the smart contract address and we're done with configuring the microservice. 
Now let's start the microservice. We'll install the dependencies using npm. And then we'll start the microservice for the devnet. Now that we have it started on port 3001, let's identify its URL, the IP address and the port 3001. Okay, it's time to tell your DAP to use the microservice instead of directly reading the values of the get time to Pong from the blockchain. First, we'll set up the microservice URL in the DAP configuration file, sourceconfig.tsx. Next, we want to switch from using the VM query to using newly created endpoint. The request to get the time to Pong is done in source pages dashboard actions index.tsx. This is the blockchain VM query code. Here we will define the function that we want to query on the smart contract and we process the result. If the result is undefined, this means that we can ping. If the result is empty, this means we can pong. And if the result contains a value, we decode that value and we display the timer on the dashboard page. Let's delete this code for now and we're going to write a generic HTTP GET request to our microservice. We won't need this query object. Instead of dap.proxy, we're going to call axios.get. Then the data returned in the JSON object with the two possible keys, status and time to Pong. The status can either be not yet pinged or awaiting Pong. In this case, we have to time to Pong key present. Of course, don't forget to manage the required imports, Axios and the microservice address that we defined previously in the configuration.devnet.tsx file. We can now save the index.tsx file and let's run the decentralized app one more time. We can now test that on the dashboard we still have the countdown and the Pong button is shown like it should. We can refresh the app multiple times. First, the app will take the value, time to Pong in seconds, from the blockchain, then it'll store it in cache. Then all future refreshes will take the value from the cache. You can also find this version of the DAP on the public repository DAP template in the branch microservice. Let's deep dive into the microservice code and explain the two basic features we have implemented. We want to minimize the number of requests done directly on the blockchain because they can be slow sometimes. So we'll first make a blockchain read for the time to Pong value. We'll cache that value and all the future reads will be done from the cache. The value won't change over time. It will only reset after we Pong. So the caching part is done in ping.pongcontroller.ts which uses ping.pong.service.ts. The number of seconds until the user can pong is returned by a function get time to pong at line 16 in ping.pong.service.ts. On line 17 we call get pong deadline which on line 33 we will set the return value in the cache. The function get pong deadline raw will only invoke the read action from the blockchain once then get or set cache will set the number of seconds in the cache. Now let's look at the transaction processor part also. 
So after the user clicks the Pong button and performs the Pong transaction, we have to invalidate the cache and we will use the transaction processor to identify the Pong transactions on the blockchain that also have the receiver as our smart contract address. Let's look at the transaction processor source file here. On line 23, we'll implement the async function handle new transactions function that has an interesting event on transaction receive. Whether new transactions are confirmed on the blockchain, this event will be excluded and an array of transactions will be provided as a parameter. We'll look in that array for a transaction that the receiver equal to our smart contract address and the data field should be Pong as defined in the smart contract. If we find one, we will invalidate the cache data for the key Pong wallet address where we previously stored the time to Pong value. We will use the delete in cache function for this. So that's all. We've created a microservice in order to make our DAP faster and scalable. This is a generic decentralized application architecture and most of the examples from this guide were just a starting point for some of our highly available and massively used products. Now we provide you a starting point in order to build your ideas and products. So where to go next? Break down this guide and learn more about how to extend the microservice, the DAP and the smart contract. Learn more on the Elrond official site here at docs.lron.com. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them using Stack Overflow. And of course, share this guide if you found it useful and ask us any questions where necessary.